Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I'm hanging out here in the woods. And in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to one poisonous mushroom and one poisonous plant that you're very likely to come across this time of year if you're exploring your woods. Now, one of the realities of foraging for food and medicine is that we are going to come across from time to time the toxic, the poisonous, and the deadly species. And it's very important to know the differences between the edible and the poisonous species. So that's what I want to do for you in this video. So stay tuned. First up is a poisonous mushroom followed by a poisonous plant. So right here is one of the deadliest mushrooms in the entire world. This is a destroying angel mushroom. There's one back here as well. So this belongs to the genus Amanita. It's a very large genus of mycorrhizal mushrooms. We have hundreds of species here in the eastern half of North America, and we have several species of destroying angel. So there are probably at least five in the entire United States, but we can probably call this one either Amanita bisporagera or Amanita amerivorosa. I want to call it the first one by Sporager just because of the slender nature of this mushroom. It's very gracile and kind of small. That's very unique, very characteristic of Amanita by Sporager. But you really need a microscope to tell the difference because like the species name suggests by Sporager, it's got two spores that are produced from these microscopic spore bearing structures known as basidia compared to four spores produced in other Amanita mushrooms. So Amanita bisporagera, Amanita amerivorosa, or another destroying angel species, definitely a destroying angel species though, and it's very important to know how to properly identify a destroying angel species. So notice, first the slender nature of this mushroom as I already mentioned, but notice that it's almost pure white. The destroying angel mushroom and its close relatives are almost all pure white. The cap of this mushroom is between one to four inches wide, and it's sometimes pale yellowish or tannish over the center, maybe even sometimes pale pink, but it's typically whitish or just ever so slightly pale yellowish near the center. And there are no patches or warts on the cap of this mushroom. Sometimes with other Amanita mushrooms, you'll see those patches being deposited over that cap. Not so with a destroying angel mushroom. On the underside, this mushroom has very crowded white gills and they're free, so they're not really attached to the stem, although sometimes they'll appear very slightly attached to the stalk. But in field guides, it's going to say that it's free from the stalk. The stem of this mushroom is between two to five and a half inches tall. And near the top of the stalk, you will see that it's got a little ring around it. And this is produced from a structure known as the partial veil, which covered the gills of this mushroom whenever this mushroom was younger. So you're gonna see that it kind of juts out just ever so slightly, not very much so like you might see in other Amanita mushrooms. Then as you work your way down the stalk, you'll see that it's slightly enlarged, but there's a cup-like vulva, a little sac at the bottom enclosing this stem. And so this is a key identifying feature for this mushroom. Whenever you're trying to uproot this mushroom, you don't wanna cut it at the stalk somewhere because you're going to lose this key identifying feature and you don't just want to pull it up because this might break off so you want to take your knife and dig around it and make sure you unearth this vulva because this is a key identifying feature for the destroying angel mushroom and this mushroom deposits a white spore print now another unique way to positively identify the destroying angel mushroom is to apply a drop of potassium hydroxide koh to the cap of this mushroom and see if it turns a yellowish color so it's white right now i'm going to put a drop of potassium hydroxide on it just wait a second, and it's slowly turning yellowish. You see that yellow color right there? And so it's white where I did not apply potassium hydroxide, and it's yellow in the dot where I applied potassium hydroxide. So that's very unique for destroying angel mushrooms. If I would apply this to other Amanita mushrooms that might look like destroying angel mushrooms, but they're not, then it won't turn a yellowish color. So this tells me that this is most likely a destroying angel mushroom, but I still need a microscope to be able to tell which species within that destroying angel group this one might be. So what's so deadly about this mushroom, Amanita bisporagera? Well, first notice that I'm handling this mushroom. So you can definitely touch this mushroom. You can handle it, you just can't ingest it. If you do ingest it, it could lead to death within three to seven days because it's a deadly poisonous mushroom. So this mushroom contains a class of compounds known as amatoxins. Some Amanita mushrooms do, not all of them, but some of them do. And these amatoxins can bind to an enzyme in our bodies known as RNA polymerase II. And this binding interferes with transcription of messenger RNA, which ultimately impairs protein synthesis and can lead to cell necrosis within our bodies. And this can damage our livers and it can cause our livers to fail on us, followed by our kidneys failing on us. And that's how it can lead to death within as little as three to seven days. Now, this mushroom is definitely not to be feared. It's one to be very aware of, but not necessarily feared. I mean, this is an important mushroom in the ecosystem where it lives. 
it's an important mushroom here in this ecosystem as well because it's a mycorrhizal fungus. So you typically find it in association with oak trees because it's ectomycorrhizal, hooking up symbiotically with various oak trees in this area. So without Amanita mushrooms, like this one, Amanita bisporogera or Amanita ameriferosa, the destroying angel mushrooms, our oak forest might not look as healthy. So destroying angel mushroom, definitely a deadly toxic mushroom. Do not, under any circumstances, do not consider eating this mushroom. Here's a toxic plant by the name of white snake root, a Geratina altissima. This plant was responsible for numerous deaths throughout the 1800s in what was termed milk sickness. And it swept through the Midwestern United States and the Ohio River Valley. And it's still very much a toxic plant to this day. Before we get into the toxins, let's talk about the identifying features of white snake root. This is a member of the Asteraceae family. And so it's blooming this time of year, late summer through late fall. And the flowers, they appear in a flat topped flowering head and each flower head is actually only about half an inch wide, and each flower head contains between 50 and 30 little flowers known as disc florets. This plant grows to be between one and a half to three feet tall, and it typically branches out. The leaves of this plant are opposite one another, and they're serrated, so they have little teeth on them, and each leaf is attached to the main stalk of this plant via a little petiole. And you typically find white snake root off the trail because it likes partial shade. Sometimes it likes full shade as well. And you rarely see it just out in the open getting direct sunlight. So what's so toxic about white snake root? Well, it contains a compound known as tremetol. And whenever livestock or cattle are feeding on this plant, that tremetol, that toxic compound, gets concentrated in their milk. And then whenever human beings drink that milk, that compound gets passed into the human being. And this toxic compound can lead to trembles, it can lead to severe pain, it can lead to vomiting, and even death. Now one of the most notable deaths attributed to milk sickness from this plant was Abraham Lincoln's mother. A lot of people say she died because of milk sickness in the early 1800s. But other people are saying it's not necessarily true. It was probably attributed to a bacterial infection known as brucellosis. But some people are saying milk sickness, other people are saying brucellosis. I'll let you do more research on it. Still, it's a toxic plant. If we would consume this, we would get that tremetol in our bodies and it can lead to trembles, it can lead to vomiting, it can lead to severe pain, especially muscle pain, gastrointestinal pain, and even death. So not a plant that should be eaten. Now this plant might resemble two edible slash medicinal plants. One would be stinging nettle. It kind of does look like stinging nettle, especially in the early stages before the flowers because they both have oppositely arranged leaves that are serrated. But white snake root doesn't have any of the stinging trichomes on it. So this plant, white snake root, will not sting you. Obviously, stinging nettles will. This might also resemble a plant known as bone set, Eupatorium perfoliatum. And it resembles that plant because this plant, white snake root, used to be in the same genus, Eupatorium. This plant used to be called Eupatorium rugosum, but now it's a Geratina altissima. Bone set is Eupatorium perfoliatum. Bone set typically grows out in the open, it needs a lot of light. It's typically a hairy plant, and the leaves are perfoliate. So the stem basically pokes right through the leaves. Not so in white snake root. You see this in the shade and it's not hairy, and it doesn't have a stem that pokes through the leaves. Each leaf has a little petiole that attaches it to the stock. So white snake root, a Geratina altissima, definitely a toxic plant. You do not want to consume this plant because of that tremetol compound found within white snake root. Well, there we have it. One interesting and toxic mushroom, destroying angel, and one interesting and toxic plant, white snake root. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it keeps you intentional with your foraging practices, and hopefully it makes you more aware of who's occupying your woods. Who's producing such interesting compounds in the areas right behind your home? Thanks for watching again. Hopefully I'll see you on the next video.